Hello, Shuen here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. I built a low bed frame for newlyweds about two years ago. Today, a neighbor asked me to build one, so I'm building a similar one again. Let's get started. First, I mill the timber. I've built a low bed frame before. I am using straight green cedar hardwood this time. It's luxurious timber. It wasn't easy to find straight green timber of this width. The previous low bed frame's headboard was 210mm wide. This time, I am using 270mm rough sawn timber. I cut it 240mm to 250mm wide, only using the hardwood portion. But I used studs for the bottom rails, since straight green timber is too good to be used there. I'm going to finish this bed frame with beeswax. I'm playing it with a super surfacer to get a good finish. I'm going to paste the bed's construction on the size of the mattress. Honestly, I had no idea how I made the previous low bed frame, so I watched my own video and realized, oh, that's how I did it. I found out that YouTube is an excellent platform since I can review my work and learn by watching past videos. To get back on topic, this bed frame is thicker than the previous one. It is 34mm thick which makes it gorgeous. The width is also greater. I think the joints will be sturdier than before as it is thicker. I use a half lap joint, which is simple. You just need to notch 30mm deep if the wood to be joined is 30mm thick, and then join them. It wouldn't be a problem to join the parts on site because I can adjust it. But this time, the owner is going to assemble the parts, so I must notch it neither too tight nor too loose when assembling or disassembling. So I don't think it will be disassembled. I need to adjust it to make the assembly easier. This is pretty tricky. Next, I mix the headboard. I hope the owner won't lean on it or press it too hard, because it's not designed for that. I use the same half lap joint for this large headboard. Though these two timbers won't be attached, I clamp them together for measurement and cutting. The headboard is 32mm thick. It looks rugged if I use the cut-ins as it is, so I hand plane both ends to make it center. I chamfer it widely and make it center diagonally to make it look elegant and comfortable.
because it is a longitudinal direction, a chamfer is the top and bottom sides smaller than the left and right sides. Though the chamfer angles differ, I ensure the edges and ends are the same thickness. I cannot cut the side rails at a right angle since I widely chamfered the headboard's ends. Attaching the headboards to the side rails, I trace the angle and cut the headboard diagonally. Need to add a little work. Now, I join each rail. There are only 4 parts because it has 4 sides. I glue each side rail made of stud lumber to the upper rail, then screws them using 120mm screws. I made two cleats, but I decided to use only one. Two cleats can make it sturdier, but the design looks uncomfortable. And finally, I make the parts for the headboard. Two white timbers are used for the headboard. Only the higher timber is tilted, the bottom one remains vertical. Since the bed will be next to a wall, the studs will be invisible unless viewed from above. I use a timber that is not designed to be exposed. I join the headboard parts. The bottom four rails are joined with a half lap joint. The two exposed headboard timbers will be secured above the end rail. It's fine even if the spacing differs slightly. I first secure each stud to the end rail using one screw each to the right height. After that, I measure the right angle, make sure the studs are vertical, and secure the first and second headboards. I won't attach the two exposed headboards. The top headboard is tilted, so it's hard to attach to the bottom headboard. I leave a gap of about 1cm or less when looking from the front. The tops of the studs will be thinner. I'm securing the studs from the back. Since the studs are cut diagonally, the screw length depends on the area, so I must use three screws, 120mm, 100mm, and 90 millimeters. 
the screws should not penetrate the headboards or be too shallow. There will be shelves for tissues on the other side of the studs. The shelves are simple, with the stud secured horizontally. Four tissues in total can be placed on the right and left. Perfect for newlyweds. Using straight green timber, I hide the top cut ends of the studs. It is used to hide the ends, but I was wondering if it could also be used as a shelf. However, this shelf will be a narrow wall side and shouldn't be too large. I make it as deep as possible in order to accommodate a smartphone. Here you can place a smartphone. To prevent objects from falling, I attach a thin piece of timber on the back. As it's just a thin piece of wood attached on top, I use staples to secure it. The four parts are now complete. I assemble them. Since the bottom parts are simple to assemble, one person can do it but two people are required to assemble the headboard. The assembly went well, so I measure a right angle. If the diagonal is the same length, that means it is a right angle. I use Japanese cypress joist wood for the slat's support rails. Each one is 45mm by 60mm. I use the wider side facing up. Then I arrange the 15mm square furring strip wood as slats on them. Firstly, I mix the entire slat without dividing it into two or three sets. Of course, I make it a little larger to give a room. Making the entire slat first and dividing it into three is much easier. Finally, I finish it with beeswax. 
I initially sanded all the parts with fine sandpaper. I now apply beeswax there. Beeswax looks delicious when scooping it. I apply two coats to finish it off. I like the way beeswax makes the wood shine. I have finished building a queen-size low bed frame that has been ordered. Only a straight green cedar hardwood is used. It's luxurious wood. It turned out nicely. It seems there are newlyweds. This bed is sturdy. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.